Good morning, students. Today our topic is fate maps. The fate maps is a diagram of egg or blastula indicating the fate of each cell or region at the later stage of development. The fate maps they are the important essential tools in most embryological experiments. They provide researchers with information on which portion of the embryo will normally become which larval or adult structure. The analysis of fate of each blastomere after first and second cleavage is called cytogeny or cell lineage study. The fate maps of frog. The fate map of Xenopus, that is frog, blastula, shows the presence of yolky macromere at the vegetal pole, which give rise to endoderm. Depending upon the position of blastopore, the endodermal area can be divided into sub-blastoporal and supra-blastoporal endoderm. The cells towards the animal pole give rise to the ectoderm, which becomes further subdivided into epidermis and future nervous tissue. The epidermal ectoderm forms at the ventral side of the animal hemisphere where the neural ectoderm forms on the dorsal side. The mesoderm forms a belt-like region known as marginal zone around the equator of the blastula. The mesoderm forms subdivided along the dorsoventral axis of the blastula. The most dorsal mesoderm give rise to notochord. From this ventrally and the mesoderm is differentiated by the somites which give rise to muscle tissue, lateral plate which contains heart and kidney mesoderm and the blood islands. In Xenopus, the thin outer layer of presumptive endoderm overlies the presentive mesoderm in the marginal zone. Now see here, this is the fate map of Xenopus. There are two poles, animal pole and vegetal pole. Animal pole is the one from where the polar body comes out. Vegetal pole is the one which is opposite to the animal pole. Vegetal pole is yolky and is responsible for the endoderm, the black colored with white spots. And the animal pole, it has got smaller cells forming the epidermis. So epidermis, it forms the nervous tissue, the blacker portion, proper black portion. And then it forms, then coming to the marginal zone. Marginal zone or the equator, it is formed by the mesoderm. And it forms the notochord. And somites for the heart, that is, somites and the heart that is the white with black dots. So these are the three layers. The upper one, epidermis, middle one, the mesoderm and the lower one, the endoderm. So first is the lateral view. Second is the dorsal view of the same blastula. That is the animal and vegetal pole. Upper, the epidermis is there, then form, coming to the nervous tissue and then coming to the somites on the sides and the heart. And then in the center, we have got the notochord. And at the last portion, that is black with white tips, we are having the endoderm. This is the dorsal view. Now coming to the exterior view. In the exterior view, what is seen is the blastopore very clearly near the endoderm. right? And then we have got supra-blastoporal endoderm and the sub-blastoporal endoderm. Then epidermis and neural plate it is seen. So this is regarding the fate map of Xenopus that is the late, late blastula. So basically fate maps they will tell us which portion will develop into which tissue. Now coming to the fate map of the chick. Before going through the fate map of chick one should go through the formation of area pellucida and area opaca. For the study of the above formation, it becomes clear that hypoblast does not contribute any cell 
to the formation of embryo proper rather they contribute to the formation of a portion of external membranes recent studies with cell adhesion molecule it has been possible to construct the fate map of chick epiblast all the three germ layers of the embryo proper is formed by the epiblastic cells the epiblast also form considerable amount of extra embryonic that is a mesodermal membrane the fate map of chick in this figure relieves that cells of epiblast are organized around the notochord and the nervous system the neural ectoderm is present as a knob like structure facing towards the anterior side the cells at the anterior part of epiblast forms the ectoderm while cells at the posterior side forms mesoderm endoderm and extra embryonic mesoderm now this is the fate map of the chick now if we look at the fate map of chick upper portion forms the ectoderm and in the center the nervous system is formed so this is the anterior portion now coming to the posterior portion in the posterior portion the center is formed by the notochord surrounding the notochord we have got a centric a circle a semicircle which forms the somite and then the next semicircle will form the heart urinary tract smooth muscles lateral plate then the next semicircle will form the endoderm and the last semicircle is responsible for the formation of extra embryonic membrane plus we have the blood forming tissues right so in the colored diagram on the right side we have a differentiation between the frog and the chick because two uh, fate maps they are there one is frog second is chick in the case of frog we have outer ectoderm then there is neural ectoderm in the center we have got the mesoderm and in the lower portion that is yellowish in color it is the endoderm whereas in the case of chick the anterior half is the ectoderm in the center we have got neural ectoderm below this portion that is the posterior portion we have got the presence of the in the center the notochord then followed by the somites then followed by the various organs like the heart urinary tract smooth muscles and the lateral plate and then we have the presence of the endoderm the yellowish color and then followed by the extra embryonic mesoderm so in this way the different fate maps in the case of chick and the frog is there so what is the usefulness of the fate map the fate map of the organism is helpful in tracing the morphogenetic movement of the cell and is ultimate position they take up however they tell us nothing about the tissue development potentiality during the morphogenesis they only tell us which cell is going to form which organ